So then when we talk about digital and we talk about real world evidence and real world data, I think the way to think about this is that it's a possibility factory. It's, it's ever expanding. It's an infinite flow, um, infinite number of use cases. And so again, the challenge isn't, will one of these things in isolation with a specific narrow pilot demonstrate benefit and value? Um, it will. And the challenge is how do you get in front of all of this? And then how do you manage it in a way that makes sense? Um, and, and uh, even more specifically, I mean, it, it doesn't stop. And so, um, and now we have the, cap you know, we, we have the, the technical capability to capture data from potentially anything. And, uh, in this particular example, um, this startup has now created a capability where they're able to connect, uh, collect information from the stool and urine samples around being able to predict uh, risk of disease, understand your diet, personalize your diet, assess your exercise level, how much alcohol you drink and on and on and on it goes. And again, that is not necessarily novel. That capability is not, isn't the novel thing anymore. The novel thing is, okay, well, how do you get in front of all of this? And how do you manage this in, in a way that's gonna make the most sense, right? And so when we talk about uh, a modern strategy, um, and even going back to the interoperability question and the, and the question around sharing of data, when it comes to AI and it comes to market innovation and, be, and when it comes to novel insights, it's volume, it's not just volume, but it's also variety of data. That's why Humana has a separate team that is doing nothing but harvesting non-traditional data sets um, to integrate within the context of how their approach population health how they're able to predict disease and how they design benefit. So on the left, you had sort of the old world model where data was sort of the very last thing that you sort of dealt with after you stood up and did all of your marketing and everything else. And then you captured it at the end to say, well, what, what works now when you've got sort of an infinite flow of data capabilities, it becomes a question of what's the data that you want. Uh, and then how do you, can you stand up an interoperable ecosystem around that. Going back to Biogen as the example, um, Biogen didn't, didn't have a strategy in place where they were actually trying to show uh, improvement in cognition. That was never their strategy. Their strategy was to produce data that showed that its drug reduced a biomarker in the brain. End of story. So back again to pharma and to say, well, okay, if, if you're positioning market access innovation around outcomes and around system value and around uh, um, demonstrating clinical benefit, that's something that has to be conceptualized as part of your data strategy and written into uh, your target product profile, the labeling that gets used and conceptualized in phase two that then forms the basis of the studies that you do. So that when it comes time to launch, you're able to say things and you have room to say and make claims around uh, evidence of effectiveness that um, is very hard to insert after the fact. This is another one of those major shifts. Um, again, you said when we talked about the data, non-traditional data sets, here's another example. Uh, and this came out of uh, some, a study that was done with uh, Tesco, which is a retail pharmacy in the UK where a team of researchers went in and took a look at all of the receipts um, that were used over a period of time and were able to understand and connect um, uh, sales figures from those, those store receipts and able to link that, not at a, at a individual person level, but at a, they don't have zip codes there necessarily, but around local rates of high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and high blood, blood sugar. Now, there's no reason, thinking back to the CVS Health, Nova Nordisk um, uh, relationship, why you couldn't stand up this capability and do the exact same thing. If the goal is creating a system that continually creates new value and new insights, but that has to be the objective on the roadmap, and oftentimes it's not. So it has to then change the conversation. So what has to happen is what happens with this data? 
right? So this data then needs to go to the community-based physicians, which mm -hmm. needs to go to the nutritionist so that in the, in the primary care visit, we have the data about either diagnosed or undiagnosed prevalence of, of, of uh, diabetes or even hypertension. And that we can then do some interventions from a health, as we were talking about, health and well-being perspective, going back to the idea of food prescriptions, which means you can now direct people of the kinds of food that they should be eating with these conditions and so that they have better health outcomes. So the, the key is, how do you get the, the grocery store system to be able to then inform the healthcare delivery component so that they are now partners in the health of their communities? So you can note where there are folks who have high blood pressure and you can then be able to help manage these, these uh, chronic diseases versus um, and in also, if you address all three of these, you're addressing obesity, you're also addressing the long-term benefits right. to these folks and all of the related diseases that are nutrition, that can be managed through nutrition. So it goes back to our, our, our early conversation, but, but here's an example of, we collect the data, the, the chains may use them to be able to figure out what they can, what they should have on their shelves and sell better. However, this information should be in going into the primary care practices to be able to help do health education, nutrition counseling, the kinds of things to better direct folks so that they can manage and have controlled versus uncontrolled, or maybe even not at all, these, these chronic diseases, which um, impact um, their, you know, it's that nice cluster, that trifecta of high blood pressure, um, diabetes, obesity, you know hyper, uh, you know, cardiac disease. And, and you hit on, I think, two key concepts. One is that um, systems deal in quantity of effects. You're not looking for just one outcome. You're looking for multiple outcomes. That's number one. And that, that's a very hard conceptual leap, especially for the pharmaceutical industry to make because um, there's a difference between linear thinking and systems thinking. Right. And what Denise just walked you through was an example of systems thinking pharma and most of the Western world and most of the education and, 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 and how you learn and how business are organized are around linear thinking. One at one, one, one point that you're going to get one solution systems deal in quantities of effects. That's number one. Number two is um, I think Denise did a, another really good job of showing what progressive integration is um, where you have to sort of approach things with a biological orientation. You have to manage things as a living system. You have to consistently feed it um, to keep it alive and to keep it improving and to keep it growing. Those, those, are, those are key principles of understanding strategy at a system level. Um, so this is creating the condition. So the, the, the big cloud providers all see this, they know this, um, and they are putting big money into it. Um, and this is just an example that's, that's taking a look at where does the actual demand for compute power, when we talk about cloud first um, and why that is the case, uh, the reason for that is because it's coming out of the clinical setting. I mean, the community setting. Um, and so this is to say that the data that's in the, in, the, in, the, in the claims databases, the individual data, the clinical data, the data that Truveta has organized itself to offer that Microsoft invested $90 million in is actually the smaller space for data. Uh, over the lifetime value, the way that this is projected out here is that, that um, data in clinical care, the stuff that's in the claims databases currently, um, generates around 0.4 terabytes over a person's lifetime. The stuff that's in the social determinants and the health behaviors is 1,100 terabytes. It's an order of magnitude bigger. That's why Accenture put $3 billion into cloud investment. That's why all of the money is going into cloud and healthcare um, because they sort of see this and they understand this, but you can't take advantage of this a, unless you're set up with the compute power to do it, 
and B, if you uh, uh, you also have the the interoperability to make that happen. So, um, I'll, I'll sort of suggest that that healthcare doesn't have a cost problem; it's got an outcome problem, and that that outcome problem is a result of market fragmentation. So you basically in the U.S. have got a four trillion dollar health economy, but everybody's making niche impacts. Um, and they're making those in niche impacts because for the most part, those markets are framed and those businesses are led with linear thinking around short-term performance, right? And so you never solve complexity, right? When it comes to ecosystems, you bound complexity. And so the path out of the woods is standing up a capability where you're basically gonna be designing an entirely new system of markets. When I think about ecosystems, I think about entirely new, new systems of markets and that conceptually the way to think about this is that market fragments, protein fragments and computer code fragments are all logically equivalent.